why you're here this morning. Maybe sit in the presence of the Lord this morning. Good morning. It's good to be here. Thank God for each and every one of you this morning. Praise the Lord. Open your Bible, amen, to Hebrews chapter 13. Amen. We've been on this long, joyous journey in the book of Hebrews. This is Father teaching verse by verse, and the Lord has us now in chapter 13, amen, and verse 7. Amen. If the Apostle Paul is closing this epistle, this, he's discussing here in this last um, chapter about social and religious duties and personal matters, and he closes with a benediction. But right now we find ourselves here in verse 7 this morning. Amen? Amen. And he's reminding uh, the Jewish Christian, the Gentile Christian, there was a, a amen, a, 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 a disagreement in the church, or the early church, amen, uh, about certain rituals and, and Old Testament ceremonial uh, 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 laws and, and, and days and, and keeping uh, things of, such as the uh, circumcision and dietary laws and the Apostle Paul throughout this epistle, amen, was bringing understanding that Jesus had fulfilled all of those mosaic laws, amen, and that uh, Moses was a servant in the house and, and Jesus a son over the house, amen, throughout this epistle. Now he's closing, amen, this epistle, and he says in verse 7, remember them which have the rule over you. Speaking of your pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets, those who as under shepherds, overseers of, in God's house, he said, remember to think of and be mindful of them and to make mention of them because they have such a great responsibility, amen? amen. These are the, are, are, are the second generation leaders here now, amen? amen? And he's encouraging them to, amen, to, to remember them, to submit to them, to this new leadership and authority. Remember them which have the rule over you. Why? who have spoken unto you the word of God. A great responsibility. Someone who stands before you with a mic, speaking to you the word of God. That's, I don't think there's a greater responsibility, amen, than have someone, amen, to speak to you what thus says the Lord, amen, that they are hearing from God. Remember them in prayer. Remember their responsibility. Those who have spoken unto you the word of God, amen, whose faith you follow, considering the end of their conversation, consider the end of their life. What is the end of their life will look like, amen? Well, it tells us in verse 17, look at verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. He says it again. And closing this epistle. We should obey. We should submit to them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. You submit yourself as they that must give an account. These are our leaders, these that have rule over you. We must give an account. We're going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we're going to have to give an account of our ministry. And how we led, and our faithfulness, and how we preached, and we taught, and we studied, and we prepared. We're going to have to give an account. So you obey them that have rule over you. Submit yourself, for they watch for your soul. A pastor, a leader, watch for your soul. A pastor, leader should be, amen. His work don't begin on Sunday morning at 11 or Wednesday at 7, 7.30. He's praying all week, watching over your soul. Yeah. <clears throat> because they must give an account. And that they may do it with joy. How many of you know there are pastors who are pastoring without joy? Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I don't want to be a pastor who pastors without joy. Praise God, I've been pastoring with joy each and every day. Amen? Amen. Pastoring is not a, a one-day, a two-day event. Amen. Pastoring is an everyday, amen. It's a lifestyle. Yes. And I can and I can agree that, amen. I can share with you all that I'm doing it with joy. Amen. Can't you tell? Look at me. <laughs> Come on, man. It's with joy, it's an honor. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. Not groaning or sad. Oh Lord, it's Sunday again, the people. 
sister so and so coming. Deacon Watermelon gonna be there. Oh, this certain family is going to be here. With, with grief. Amen? Why, why should we remember them? For that is unprofitable for you. If, you're, if you don't obey those who have rule over you and submit yourself, amen, the ones who watch for your soul, amen, and, and that they may do it with joy because if not, it's unprofitable for you what you need. Amen. The, the Spirit of God, the power of God will come forth and give you what you need. Amen. And you prepared yourself to come to the house of God for several hours and amen. But you're not hearing what you need because, amen, you're not remembering your pastor. Are you praying for your leader? Are you praying for your pastor? I'm going to show us some, some verses here today where the Apostle Paul, amen, uh, recognized he needed prayer. This is the man who went to the third heaven. Yeah. Saw things that he couldn't even uh, honor. This is a man who God chose himself on the Damascus road. Right. But yet he, he asked the congregation to remember me in prayer. Mm -hmm. That I can preach with boldness and that doors will be open unto me. Mm -hmm. And that's the encouragement today that the saints will pray for their pastor. Amen. Amen. In James chapter 3 and verse 1, amen, when I started teaching Sunday school years ago in Church of God by Faith, the Lord had revealed this to me. My brethren, be not many teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Amen? So remember them that have rule over you authority over you. Submit yourself that they can do it with joy without, with, without grief, that it'll be profitable unto you. Every pastor, everyone who stands up a minister of God and, and preaches the word of God, amen, will be judged more uh, 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 strictly, will be have a greater condemnation on how they preach, what they preach, when they preach, amen, and the lifestyle that they live, amen? So the Apostle Paul is encouraging uh, 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 the, the saints here in the scripture, encouraging you and I today to remember them that have rule over you. It'll be profitable for you. Amen? Look at Matthew. I want to uh, just uh, uh, remind you, amen, of what the responsibility of a, of a pastor, of a leader, those that have rule over you. Matthew 18 and 6, Jesus says, Who shall, shall offend? Who shall, whosoever shall offend or cause one to stumble. One of these little ones who believe in me. If we cause one of these little ones, a new believers, to which, which believe in me, if I shall cause you to stumble, because I'm up here preaching with grief, and not with joy, and because I'm not preparing myself, I'm not prayed up, I'm not, amen, uh, reading and studying and preparing like I should, amen, and I cause you to stumble, because I'm preaching, amen, with, with anger and, 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 and animosity, and, and amen, and, and I'm not being led on the Lord, if I cause you to stumble, to offend you, one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone would hang around his neck. When God has called somebody in the church, when God has brought by the Spirit of God, He has uh, prompted them to come to church, and the, and the man of God, Amen, Amen, offends them. You ever heard of church hurt? Yes. You ever had family and friends who, uh, 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 for years now, won't return to church because somebody said something or did something from the pulpit? Right. Amen. Amen. But the, Jesus said, the Scripture says. It was better for him that a millstone was hanged about his neck and that he was drowned in the depth of the sea. See, that's why you got to remember them who have rule over you. Pray for me. Amen. That when I stand before you with this mic, that I will speak everything with love and with joy. Amen. Amen. And with the peace of God. Amen. We're all human. We all have flesh. We all have emotions. Amen. Amen. We all, amen, have families and are married and things go on in life. We work. Amen. And we have some sheep. 
and we can't beat the sheep. The Bible says, feed the sheep, Peter. Feed my lamb. We're not to come here and beat the sheep with God's words, amen? We're to feed the lamb. Look in Luke chapter 12. I don't want to spend much time here. It's a parable. And speaking of faithfulness, and Peter asked Jesus in verse 41. Peter said unto him, Lord, uh, speakest thou this parable unto us? <laughs> or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward? A household manager. Who's the, who's the wise leader? Whom the Lord, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Amen? Amen. When we're doing what the Lord calls us to do, when every man of God, when the one who, uh, 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 who's uh, 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 speaking the, the, the truth of God into your life, amen, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verse 44, of the truth I say unto you, that he will make him a ruler of all that he has. Amen. It's, it's a reward for, amen, for uh, 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 taking on the responsibility as a, a leader in God's house. Amen? amen. But it's also a greater condemnation. Amen. So that's why we're asking you all to pray for us today. Amen. amen. You know, I, I still pray for my, my pastor up in Stark. I, I pray for a lot of, uh, uh, um, I mention them in prayer, those uh, TV uh, ministries and those who I uh, enjoy on radio and TV and TikTok, uh, amen, there's some good teachers out there, some good preachers out there, and I lift them up in prayer and ask God to continue to use them. Amen. I'll never be in their, in their, in their presence, but amen about it, but if I think enough of them to search them out and look for them and think of them, I surely I can pray for them. Right. <laughs> Listen there. Look at verse, I'm going to go right to verse 47. And that servant who knew his Lord's will. See? I know the Lord's will, my, the Lord's will. He's spoken to me, amen? amen. And it, but I prepare not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. It's not about a salvation issue. Mm -hmm. But it's about, uh, you can suffer a loss of rewards, Amen. So that's what I want to share with you all today about, before we go on, about those who have rule over you. They have a great responsibility. And we're seeking and asking for your prayers here today. Amen? Amen. 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 Give God a praise. <laughs> Remember them that have a rule over you. Go back to Hebrews. Chapter 13, and we're in verse 7. Remember them that have the rule over you. Wow. Pray for them. Lift them up in prayer. They have a great responsibility. Why? Because they speak the word of God to you. Is there anything more precious in this world to you than the word of God? But remember them. Who have a rule over you. And these men, amen, have, they help establish your faith. The Bible says who faith you follow. A man of God should be a man of, amen, abundant faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. You need, you need a, 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 a word in season, out of season. You need a ready word. A timely word. You need to hear from God, Amen. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, the Apostle Paul, in his farewell to the Ephesian saints after three years ministry there, he says in verse 28, Acts 20 and 28, Take heed therefore unto yourself, 
and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. That's what the overseers he left in, the, in Ephesus, their responsibility was to feed the church of God. Amen. Which he had purchased with his own blood. Amen. See the emphasis? See how important that Jesus purchased this little church. Jesus church purchased these mega churches, mm -hmm. these house churches, these street churches, street ministries. He purchased them all with his blood. That's why we're not to, amen, uh, 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 touch his anointing and do his prophet no harm. Don't look at some minister, some pastor, some organization, small, big, large, uh, don't look like you think it should look, and uh, run in your mouth. That's right. <laughs> because the Jesus purchased that, which you are judging and criticizing, with his own blood. Yes, but you, what we can do is pray. Amen? Mm -hmm. how, how did the church come about? With his blood. Yes. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Yes. Amen? Amen? Don't allow the one who, uh, who, who has the key to the gates of hell, uh, we know who that is, amen? Use you to, amen, to come against the church of God, amen? amen. Every church you see, I don't care what name on it, is a church of God. It doesn't matter how many members it have, that, amen, and how uh, 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 established in the building may uh, look, and amen, how you drive up, amen, and how many uh, 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 ushers and parking lot attendants they may have, uh, uh, they may not have any, but it's a church of God. Yeah. And we need to remember that, amen? amen? And that's what the Apostle Paul is sharing with the overseers he's, he's leaving, that he's trained in, in Ephesus. Their responsibility is to feed the flock of God. Amen? Amen? That Jesus purchased with his own blood. Look at verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves, shall savage wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. See? Judaizers would come in. Gnostics would come in. And try to mix in law and grace. Uh, totally remove grace and put back in the Levitical priesthood system. Amen? Amen. Grievous wolves. A, a leader has a responsibility, amen, to have a spirit of discernment to know who's coming in. And the purpose that they're coming in with, and, and, and especially someone who wants to hold a mic. Amen. And, 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 and want to feed God's people. We must be must be sure, believe it, be sure that that's the right person, amen? amen. Not to deceive God's people. Amen. First Timothy, remember them to have rule over you. Hmm. This man that has rule over you This one who's standing in the house of God, man or woman. Yeah. The Bible says that in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2 that they must be apt to teach. Amen? Mm -hmm. They must have the gift of teaching. Amen? There should be someone in verse 3 that has, that is patient, self-control, and not covetous. Someone who knows how to rule their own house in verse 5. And verse 6 says someone who's not a novice, a new convert, a beginner. Or they could be full of pride, amen? So, so let us remember them that have rule over you. In 2 Timothy 4, and verse 1, the Apostle Paul in his last epistle to Timothy, as he's passing a mantle to Timothy, he gives Timothy some instructions as who will be the new leader of the churches of God. 
And he says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, he says, I, I command thee, I charge thee, Timothy, therefore before, before God. How many know that God is a witness? When, when one who has ruled over you have to stand before God, it's because God is the witness. I, I command you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Amen. That's what the responsibility of a leader, a pastor. Timothy, preach the word. What did he say? Preach Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's the living word. Yeah. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. There's a lot of preaching and teaching going on, but all of it ain't about Jesus. Right. We need to preach Jesus, amen? Yeah. Preach Jesus and him crucified, or uh, what the Apostle Paul says in another passage, amen? We preach Jesus and him crucified. Preach the word. And be instant. Be ready. A pastor should be ready in season and out of season. He said, and he should be ready to what? Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine in his teaching. Amen? Yes. Why? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that time is here. That time is now. Many people can't endure sound doctrine. They want to be entertained. <laughs> You want to see me moonwalk when you shout there? Yeah. That's entertainment. People don't want to endure sound doctrine. We can't sit still for a, an hour here, amen, uh, uh, to hear sound doctrine. But after their own lust, what they'll do, Shall they heat he to themselves, teacher? They'll find a teacher, they'll find a church, they'll find a congregation that'll have them out by now. <laughs> by now, you'll be gone. I'm just heating up. <laughs> if I can, if God can take that desire to be home by one o'clock to watch kickoff out of me. I know he could do it for everybody. <laughs> I know how they're sitting in them seats. I'm out there watching my watch. Come on, Chris. Why you gotta say that long? See, that when I was a novice, immature, not understanding praise and worship, not understanding what's going on. But we should be 10, 15, 20 years in the church. And we ready to go. Go where and do what? Eat. <laughs> well, we need to eat this word. That's right. It's time to be on the meat of the word. Yes. Listen, verse 3. The time will come when they, they will not endure sound doctrine. The apostle Paul is telling uh, Timothy. But after their own lust, shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. After their own lust, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh, emotional, you know, lust of the eye, what they can see. Right. And the pride of life, I go to this church. This is my pastor. Mm -hmm. We got a big old congregation, big old parking lot. But what about the word? That's right. Amen. Let's make sure we have the word. Make sure you're getting the word. Don't just go because the crowd is there. That's right. Don't, don't pick a, a, a congregation, a church, a pastor for your own love. Have an itch in the ear. They want to hear what they want to hear. Look at verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. People will turn away their ears. They will, how you turn away your ears? Amen. It'll begin, amen, uh, uh, brothers and sisters that used to sit up front. You'll see them move to the back. They'll move further back. Then they'll start being late. Then they'll start missing service. Then eventually they're gone. Because, amen, they're turning away their ears from the truth. And Jesus is the way, the truth. And the life. Yes. Don't turn your ears away from Jesus. 
and shall be turned into fables and myths and stories. People like stories. They like, they like 30 minutes of stories and 10 minutes of the word. Well, I'm going to give you 59 minutes of the word and one story. And you already got it. If you missed it, I'm sorry. I'm not about giving you stories. I'm about giving you this word right here. That's what, that's what bring me here. I don't have patience for stories. When I'm searching for someone to listen to on TV, radio, social media, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not standing for somebody telling me a story. I need to hear the word. I need to hear some scripture within two minutes. Because that's what gives life. That's right. Thank you, Lord. So the Apostle Paul encourages Timothy. He says, verse 5, walk thou in all things, endure affliction. See, a man of God must endure affliction, trial, trouble, tribulation, persecution. He still must come up here and stand before you like everything is all right. Like everything is all right. Like we don't have problems. Like we don't have issues. I've, I've been an armor bearer. Yeah. I was an armor bearer for seven years. I've seen and heard things from my pastor. No one else, he's seen her. He had frustrations. Yes. Yes. Great pastor, great leader, great preacher, great teacher. But he had frustration. Yes. But we've been in the office. He could vent to me. We have, we have issues just like you. Yeah. Endure affliction and do the work of an evangelist, Timothy, and make full proof of that ministry. Yeah. Fully accomplish this, this work that, that God has begun in you. Finish, make full proof of this ministry, Timothy, that your, your mother, your grandmother, amen? Mm -hmm. Eunice. Yes. Began in you, teaching you, instructing you, in the words of righteousness. Make full proof of it. Amen. So that's why you should remember them that have rule over you. No, don't don't take don't take them for granted. Amen. We, we assume everything is alright because we will put forth that facade that we are right. But there's no life itself that everyone has issues in their house. Amen. Yeah. Everyone has health issues. Everyone can have financial or economic issues. Everyone can have family, children, grandchildren issues. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If you don't see them, amen, that's probably more reason to pray. Amen. God, I know something going on with it, but I'm, I'm praying for them. Yes. Pray for your pastor. Yes. Remember them that have room over you. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Apostle Paul, we know, was chosen by God mm -hmm. on the Damascus Road. Amen? Yes, yes. Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? You're kicking against the brick, man. Blinded him. Sent Ananias to him. <laughs> Let him know he had a job for him. <laughs> Amen? Ananias said, do you know Saul? Ananias didn't want to go. This man is persecuting the church. Jesus told Ananias to, to go in Acts 9 and 15. Go that way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Everyone who stands up before you with, this, with a mic in their hand or, or speaking the things of God should be a chosen vessel of God. Amen. 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 The Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 13 and verse 46 and 47, he was to go to the Gentile, Jews, Gentile, kings, and, and all those in authority. But when they rejected him, the Apostle Paul says in Acts 13, this is the first turning to the Gentiles. He always, before now, went to the Jews first. But they rejected him in the word. 
So it says in verse 46, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold or grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Speak to the Jews. Speaking of the Jews. But seeing ye put it from you, judging yourself on words of everlasting life. See, when you put the word from you, you're judging yourself of everlasting life. This word is what gives us everlasting life. That when you put it away, when you put it aside, when you lay it down, when you haven't read the Bible, read, when you haven't studied the word, you haven't read the word, you haven't listened to preaching and teaching, you're putting the everlasting life away. Do you see that? But seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentile, for so has the Lord commanded us. Amen? Amen? See, it was a, a new covenant we was under now. The Gentiles were once without hope and without covenant, without the oracles in the world. But now because of Jesus, amen, we all now can hear the word of God right. and understand it. So let us not put it away. That's good. Don't, don't put it away for extended periods of time. You have to Make time. You have to, amen, move everything aside. Amen? amen. amen. Encourage, your, encourage your, your husband, amen, to spend time in the Word. Amen. You'll be a small wife, young ladies. <laughs> Find your man of God. Make way for him to, to, stay, to uh, uh, be in the Word because if he's in that Word, guess who go reap the benefits? Guess who is going to profit? You. Yes. Amen. Amen. Paul was appointed by the Lord. In Romans 15 and verse 15, he said, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some part as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentile, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. See? He had to move along. He went from Jew to Gentile. But he kept that hunger, that thirst after righteousness. Every, every man of God, they have to have, continue to have that zeal. And they have to have that zeal with knowledge. Amen? Amen. Israel had that zeal, but not pertaining to knowledge. Amen. That's why you have to remember them that have rule over you. That they keep that zeal, that hunger. You know, after, after 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, sometimes people can lose that zeal. Yeah. They just do it now out of practice. Amen? And, and out of, you know, they... they uh, after 15, 20, 30 years, you you know, you read this Bible, you preach this Bible through from the front to the back, you get up now, you, you just feel like you don't have to pray and have to prepare. You just get up and give, give the people what you got. <clears throat> Amen? Mm -hmm. And that's when people can feel you just giving them what you got, they start putting the word away. They start believing, where's the anointing? Where, where's the power? So that's why you remember your pastor in prayer so he can get up, amen, uh, 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 they can get up and have what, what, uh, have what God has given them and not doing it in their own power yes. and own strength mm -hmm. because of the prophet, you. The Apostle Paul, in 1 Timothy 1 and 12, he says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what we want. We want men and women of God who God put into the ministry. Yes. Not someone who put themselves in the ministry. Not someone who another man put in the ministry. You want to you want to uh, uh, be before someone who God put in the ministry. Amen. 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 And 
And the apostle Paul said, he put me in the ministry. Uh, uh, before, I was a blasphemer, an evil speaker. I was a persecutor. I was a violent man. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. See, Pastor Paul, he's taking off the old man yes. and he put on a new man. Lord, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Every pastor, every, all of us have a, a past, amen? Yes. That's why we should not get up here and be judgmental, critical of, of ones coming in and, and just learning the word of God and make backslide now and then. Because we all have had a past. Yes. But it needs to stay in the past. It needs to stay in the past. Yeah. In 2 Timothy 1 and 11, the Apostle Paul said, I'm appointed. Now, who appointed him? God appointed him. He said, I'm appointed. You want an appointed man before you. You want an appointed minister before you. He said, I'm appointed a preacher. 2 Timothy 1 and 11. I'm a, appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. That's a lot in that. For I know whom I have believed. See? And that's Jesus. No matter what suffering or persecution he went through, and we know the Apostle Paul went through shipwrecks and beating and stoning by those in the church and outside the church. Amen. But he believed and he was sure that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? Amen. So he was able to keep his commitment unto him against that day, against the day of the Lord. Amen? So that's why you pray for your leader. Because they all go through something. If you're doing something for the Lord, the devil will make sure you go through something. Because he, amen, goes to and fro throughout the earth to see whom, who may, whom he may devour. And guess where he would like to start? In the pool pit. Amen? He would like to start up here. If he can devour the leader and, and have the leader fall and and, and and make mistakes, say things, amen, and divide the church. That's what he'll do. See? Church splits and divisions happen all the time. Amen. So we should pray for your leader. Amen. amen? The Apostle Paul requested prayer repeatedly. In Romans 15 and, and uh, verse 30, I'm going to be moving quickly. He said, he said, now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit. Listen now, listen to how he's, he's, he's putting uh, uh, um, this responsibility, he's putting emphasis. He said, because of the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, you can't get any higher than that. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, I beg you. For the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Amen. And he prefaced it with for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Yes, yes. And for the Holy and for the love of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That you pray with me. And now, now pastors should be praying themselves. Yes. But that you pray with me in your prayers to God for me. That I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea. And when they didn't believe in the Apostle Paul's day, they would kill you. They won't, they don't just walk away. Or they just don't show up. They will turn you in. Amen. So he's asking for what? He's asking for prayer. In 2 Corinthians. In chapter 1. His life was threatened again. Hmm. He was pressed out of measure. He believed he was going to die. 
He thought he had the sentence of death on his head, the Bible says, in verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead, who delivers us from so great a death and does deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also help. See, you can help. God will deliver us. But you can help, saints. Help it together by prayer for us. Yes. As the Apostle Paul made his missionary journeys on the high seas and, and through different uh, 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 nations or people who didn't believe, amen, uh, he said you can help by your prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul understood he needed he needed help. And he wasn't afraid to ask for it. Amen. Philippians 1 and 19. Philippians 1 and 19. He's asking for prayer to preach and to rejoice in it. And he picks up here in verse 19. He says, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation. Through your prayer. Mm. See, he's trusting the saints to pray. Mm. Saints, let's be men and women of God who pray for your leaders. Remember them that have the rule over you. Mm -hmm. One way we can do it is, is, is prayer. Amen? Yeah. Colossians 4 and 2, he says again, continue in prayer and watch it in the same with thanksgiving. Praying also for us. Romans, Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians. He's asking for what? He's asking for prayer. Amen? Amen. Did I do Ephesians? I don't think I did. Ephesians 6, 18, and he says, Pray always with all prayer, supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me. He said, pray for all saints and for me. Over and over and over. Ephesians, Romans, 2 Corinthians, Philippians, Colossians, and now, finally, in 1 Thessalonians, he prays, he says, he says in verse 25, brethren, pray for us. Pray for us. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2, he says, finally, brethren, pray for us. Remember them that have rule over you. Begin with prayer. That word remember. Amen. It, it means to, uh, to think of, to be mindful, and to make mention. Mm -hmm. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have a free course. And be glorified even as it is with you. That's what you want. You want the word to have a free course. You don't want any hindrances, amen, by the wicked one. That the word can spread, amen, rapidly and go about and accomplish what God will have it to accomplish. Yeah. That his word don't, won't return to him void, amen? Yeah. Well, it takes prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. Yeah. Remember them that have the, the rule over you. Praise the Lord. They have been called, divinely called to, and appointed by God. If you believe the man of God, the woman of God, is divinely appointed by God, and that God has called you to uh, uh, be in that ministry, that should be one of your uh, responsibilities, duties, whatever word you want to use. If you believe that that man or woman is, amen, your, your pastor is where, is where God called you to be, there should be prayed up every day by the congregation. Because it would be profitable for you that they do it with joy. And not with grief. Amen? If you believe that he's divinely ordained. Amen? Back over in, in, in Hebrews 13, it says in verse 24, salute them that have the rule over you. 
Show them respect and appreciation. Show them respect and appreciation for those that have rule over you. Amen? If you're in the house of God, if you're in God's house with someone who has rule over you, have respect and honor for that one. Amen? Amen. Now, the Bible tells the minister that we're to feed the flock of God in 1 Peter 5 and 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not by compulsion, but willingly, and not for money, but of a ready mind. We should not be up here preaching and teaching by compulsion. And we should be up here preaching and teaching for money, Amen. but of a ready mind. A willing man. And if it says in verse 3, 1 Peter 5 and 3, neither be as low as over God's heritage. Mm -hmm. See? You have some people almost like a cult. Mm -hmm. We can't lower it over you because you are the lower God's heritage. Amen? Yes. But be an example to the flock. Amen. Yes, That's the responsibility of a pastor. Amen? Amen. So, so remember... Can you remember to pray for your leader, the one that has rule over you, the one who has spoken unto you the word of God? Is there anything more important in your life than hearing and hearing the word of God? I don't think so. The word of God is what matters. There's nothing more important than hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And in the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. The word was with God. And the word what? Mm -hmm. Was God. Yes. These doctrinal, these teachings. You should value them. Mm -hmm. I mean, and when you have a, a CD in your hand, we, we give you the CD. You should, you should listen to it over again. Mm -hmm. Glean from it all you can. Mm -hmm. That you may grow thereby. Mm -hmm. It'll be profitable for you. That's my goal to teach you the word. Amen. Amen. Amen give you, amen, only the truth. Amen. That's all I want to give you. The truth of God's word. No more, no less, but I want to give it to you. Amen. Because I know that's what will determine our growth and our development. Yes, right. The Bible tells us to study to show thyself approved mm -hmm. unto God. Not to man. Mm -hmm. Unto God. Mm -hmm. That lets us know he watches. Yes. He's looking into those who are studying. Who, those who are diligent. Those who are striving in the word. In, in privacy of their home. Yes. In their prayer closet. Study to show thyself approved unto God. The Bible says in Hebrew that he will, he will reward those that what? Diligently seek him. He will reward those that diligently seek him. What will the Lord reward you with? Spiritual understanding. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Wisdom from on high. A spiritual discernment. If you study to show thyself approved unto God, that you are a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, we as pastors, we as leaders, those of us that have rule over you, that you are to remember... But every man of God, every woman of God, amen? amen? At some point in time, have to write it about the word. Yes. If you're the leader of your home, if you have family, friends, if you're witnessing to someone, amen, you have to rightly divide the word. Yes. It's not just for somebody because they have one to call them. It's for every one of us to be able to what? Rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Study. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
In 1 Timothy 4 and 13, the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, till I come give attendance to reading. <laughs> give attendance to, to reading the word. Attention to exhortation and to doctrine, to preaching and to teaching. He says, give attention to preaching and to teaching and reading this word. Anyone who stands up on a regular basis should be, amen, reading this word. Mm -hmm. If they were to stand up before you on a, 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 a Sunday morning, Wednesday night, if you have midweek service, we can't just pick up the word an hour or two before service. Yeah. We can't pray once we get the mic in our hand. Mm -hmm. We should be prayed up, what, all week. And says, you can help if you pray with me. Yeah. I've shown you many scriptures. The Apostle Paul asks for prayer. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Pray for those who have rule over you. For it will be profitable unto you and your house. Yes. Glory to, God. Glory to you and your growth. You and your development. Mm -hmm. Don't assume that everything is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And we're closing. Remember them, think of them, be mindful of them, make mention of them in your prayers that have the rule over you. Verse 17, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. That's very important. They watch for your soul. As they that might give an account, they're going to have to give an account to God mm -hmm. and that they may do it with joy. And not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Salute them that have the rule over you. Three times in this last chapter, the Apostle Paul is dealing with how you are to respond to your leader. Mm -hmm. To those who have rule over you. This, this church thing, amen, it's not just all the pastors. A lot of pastors burn out because they're trying to do it all themselves. I, I'm going to put some of that on you is through scripture. Amen. If I'm not preaching and teaching and uh, is it because you're not praying, helping me in prayer? Some things don't come up about prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. You want something to come out of me? You want me? You want God to speak through me? Join me in prayer. Remember them that had a rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God. Amen. The word of God. Let that sink in. Mm -hmm. You're sitting before someone who's speaking to you the word of God. What's more important in your life than the word of God? The word of God is what brought you into salvation. Yes. And now you're entrusting someone to bring you the word every week and you're not praying for that individual? You should be praying, oh Lord. Let your will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven in United Covenant. I have a prayer. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Considering the end of their life, we will have a greater condemnation, a greater stricter judgment from just saying we are pastors and appointed by God we're going to have a greater condemnation. Mm -hmm. So I'm soliciting your prayers, yeah. reminding you of your prayers, to remember me and my house in your prayers. Yeah. And any other pastor or teacher, amen, that God has put on your heart yeah. that you enjoy, yeah. amen. They're not asking for any kind of financial uh, 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 or something from us. So the least we can do is remember them in prayer because I enjoy their, their teaching and their preaching and it's been beneficial to me and my growth and development. Amen. You ever heard of Joseph Prince? Yes. I love listening to him. Amen. But So I keep him in prayer. Amen. Praise God. You ever heard of Fred Price Jr.? Yes. I love listening to him. So I remember him in prayer. Amen. And I have a few other people I listen to. But I remember them in prayer. That they would continue to speak. Yes. What God said. So 
Remember me in your prayer. Amen. 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 Give God a praise. We're going to give you. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the word. We give all praise, honor, and glory to you. We thank you for the demonstration of your Holy Spirit and power here today. Without you, we can do nothing. We thank you, Lord, that the word has gone forth with simplicity and understanding that wicked one cannot come immediately and snatch it away because we all have understanding. And we thank you, Lord, that we will not just be hearers of this word, but doers of this word. We will return to prayer. We will increase our prayer life. We will pray for those that have rule over us, Lord. We will remember them and understand that they have a greater condemnation. That they, they watch for my soul, and amen. And amen. I want them to do it with joy, amen, and not with grief, for it's unprofitable for me. Father, I thank you today for the word today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give God a praise. Hallelujah. God.